As I told you at the start of the day, uh, Ron Brown underwent oral surgery just a few days ago. I talked to his son, Ronnie. Uh, actually, he emailed me on Thanksgiving night, and then we talked on Friday morning. And Ronnie, uh, Ron Brown wasn't able to travel because of that. He's still not back to normal uh, just yet. And uh, he asked uh, if we would hold off inducting him until next year. And we will grant his wish. Ron Brown will be here next year. But he also wanted me to pass along to you that he wants to come when Lincoln Park plays, we hope, Steelton High Spire in the C.J. Betters Tournament at the Community College of Beaver County's Golden Dome at the end of December. Right now, it's not bracketed to set up that way. It was originally that Lincoln Park was supposed to play Steelton High Spire. They changed the brackets around. And I know that Coach Bariski, Coach Javis, and their squads are trying to get that bracket reset so that Lincoln Park will play Steelton High Spire and then wear those visual throwback uniforms. It'll be reminiscent of that 1965 state championship game. So we're honoring Ron Brown's wishes. He will be here next year and receive his black at that time. He's handsome though, isn't he? Next, I want to invite John Clark up to the podium. John is here to accept the award for Junior Clara, the man who helped lead Midland to his second WPIO football title in 1954. He's a powerful running back in both high school and at the University of Pittsburgh. Uncle John is here to accept the award for the late Junior Clara. Good afternoon. Um, as, you, as you'll find, uh, I'm not the speaker that Chris is, but I'll give him a shot with the Troy Palomaro. Uh, uh, we octogenarians sometimes lose up here our train of thought, but uh, I'll give it a shot. Uh, anyway, with uh, uh, before I go any further, uh, I better, like I say, I forget, I better remind, uh, I was reminded to bring up the fact that John or Junior, as a lot of people knew him, uh, when he graduated, Pitt was uh, approached by the Green Bay Packers uh, for his speed, I'm sure. And he, but he was also approached by Uncle Sam, and uh, they didn't care how fast he ran, so they knew where he went. Uh, with that said, John did a, a lot of memorable things in playing football at Lincoln High, at Pitt, with the Stuttgart Stallions and military, and uh, with the uh, Pittsburgh Ironmen when he returned home. Uh, I, uh, I think that myself, I think that just scoring a touchdown in most of the games that he played was a uh, feat in itself. Uh, the story I like to tell, though, about John is when he quit school. Maybe some of you remember. Uh, up at Pitt, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the kids were given assignments periodically, and uh, his job was to wash dishes. He didn't like that, he went home. And he told his dad, he said that, uh, I didn't mind doing the dishes, but I was the only one on the traveling squad that was given an assignment, I didn't think it was fair. Well, anyway, Coach Fuchsia at Pitt uh, at that time called him up and told him, get back up here and just try to work things out. And also, Dr. Benedict, a Pitt alumni from Midland, called him up and told him in no uncertain terms, get your butt back to school. And he did. Lo and behold, when he got back, the Pittsburgh Press, uh, in the sports section, splashed uh, dishes, flare returns. Now he was stuck with the name dishes. Well, the very next game that they played, Ivan Thomas flipped the pass to John, and he went 70 yards for a touchdown, and the way the paper had it, with a slew of Mountaineers on his trail. Uh, the coach for the Mountaineers at that time used to uh, give nicknames for different things, and uh, he said, he's not Dish's Flair, he's a flying saucer. <laughs> <laughs> with that said, I'd just like to read a small portion of a uh, write-up in the Beaver Valley Times when John died. And it was by a Lee, uh, say this as it's spelled, Chautenay, Chautenay from the Beaver Valley Times. 
and at the head of his heading, John Flair dies, was football star for Midland, Pitt in the 1950s, and it went on to stay. With two minutes left in the 1954 WPIA Class AA football championship game, Midland Lincoln High School was down by a touchdown to Braddock, and the time was running out. So when a Lincoln end fumbled the pass reception on his own 20-yard line, it looked like the Leopards bid for a second WPIA title but fall short. John Flair wouldn't let that happen. He charged out of the backfield, scooped up the ball, and took it 80 yards for a touchdown. Braddock and Midland tied and shared a title that year. Henry Sepuleta, a friend and teammate uh, at, at high school and in, at college, said this, we can always count on John to come up with a big play. He had great eye and hand coordination. He was unbelievable. And he was. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Thank you for allowing us to remember John Jr. Clara here today.